Hello and welcome Sagittarius. This is your October 2023 general reading with myself, Thomas Janak. You are watching Thomas's Tower readings. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you want uh, more readings, you can um, now follow me on TikTok where I do a card a day, every day, each day, right? So there's a lot, a little short um, video that I published there every day where I give you a card for the day. And if you feel like that's all well and good, but I would like to have a personal reading, that can be arranged too. You will find all the information how to go about it in the description box below. Now, Sagittarians, what we do here, we will now look at the overall energy for the months of October 2023 for the very sign of Sagittarius before we then go into your emotional core, see if there's love coming in um, or if there's some healing that needs to happen, that sort of thing, before we then lastly look at opportunities as they present themselves to you in the months of October 2023. So, are you ready? With no further ado, let's have a look at the overall energy for the months ahead for your very sign. Let's see what the guides got. Okay, I'm asking them to give me everything I need here. Um, and give me one second, it feels like I'm getting a bit more here. But, ah, okay. So, they're already giving me what I need for the en entire reading, for all the sections in the reading, that's fine. And it's probably a good thing because, to be fair, um, while I'm trying to separate this slightly so it's easier to actually say this and easier, I always noticed, for you to understand it, life doesn't quite <laughs> separate itself so much. <clears throat> anyway, let's have a look at what we got for your overall energy for the months of October 2023. You have the energy of Uranus, can't pronounce this well, <laughs> which is the planet of change so you have the energy of change coming in and you have the energy of ruby which is sort of a obviously a, a darker kind of red um, so red is about being grounded but ruby is about looking at yourself and then once you are grounded you you do something with it so what i'm getting is it's about rejuvenation so what the guides are saying to you is there's changes coming and in order for you to handle them all you cannot be in a state where you kind of go like, oh, my life is crap, right? So should you be a person that at this point in time not uh, is not doing well, um, please, 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 um, go for walks, um, nurture yourself, you know, be be hydrated, you know, maybe have a piece of cake. Anything that gets you going, that gets your energy going, that makes you a bit happier, maybe watch an old movie, right, if that makes sense. Um, so what I'm getting is for you to, to rejuvenate yourself because there's changes coming in. So to be fair, Sagittarians, I do not get these changes to be unbearable or undoable, um, but they are quite in your face. Right? Now remember, this is a general reading. It may not re resonate with all of you. I get that. But for those of you that are experiencing changes where you kind of go like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. Um, in order for you to look at them, you need to be in a higher energy, right? And what I'm getting is, is actually, wherever possible, I'm getting a physical aspect to it. So maybe it's time that you did um, some exercises and some exercising. Maybe, maybe that's what's missing in your life, right? Um, yeah, that's all I'm getting for your overall energy, you know, but you need to prepare yourself for the changes that are coming, right? So to, to cut a long story short and to be fair here, the way the guides made me feel this is, I do not feel devastating changes, um, if that makes sense. Um, but I feel like some of them are maybe overdue a little, right? So, you know, do something with it, rejuvenate yourself and especially rejuvenate, rejuvenate your body. Um, and really do something with that energy. Okay, that was that. Now we're looking into the energy of your uh, emotional core, which is oftentimes about the energy of love. And in your case, um, 
it is interesting because you have Venus, which is obviously the planet of love, and you have the south node, which denotes your past. Now, what is interesting here is that this is neither here nor there, right? So you would assume when Venus is the, is the first energy that shows up here, that what the guides are saying is it's all awesome, there's love coming in, right? And I'm not saying there isn't, but the point is, whatever love is coming in, um, really, really important, um, what's it called? To, um, sorry, there's just a phone call coming through. I, I still, I hope you can still uh, hear me, right? Okay, let me just uh, talk through this here. Uh, okay, the phone call has now stopped. <laughs> oh, good. So you have, <clears throat> so the energy here is, sorry about that. Energy here is that, that, that you would think that love is coming in, but I'm getting the south node with it, which means it will very likely, um, uh, hang on. Let me just stop this for a second. Sorry about that. There was just loads of texts coming through and uh, a phone call about the same thing from two different from two different people at the same time. In any case, let's return. You have Venus and the South Node. And I just said if Venus comes in, you would you would think, oh, there's love coming in. And there might. But because it is linked to your past, what the guys are saying is this. Should you be in a relationship, then you have to also understand and realize that you are here to trigger whatever has not been fixed in your partner and vice versa and this is about communication this is about um, understanding if there are things that aren't working in your relationship now is the time to talk about them because the south node has always been seen as negative and you have heard that um, that phrase you know everything went south it comes from the fact that the south node is your karmic energy and has always been seen back in the day when people were starting to look at the stars they were sort of seen as snakes or dragon dragons and the south node was the dragon head and you know so there was a bit of fear um that was associated with it if that makes sense bottom line is i do not sense here for you that this is massively karmic but there's stuff from the past that hasn't been released that needs to be released and will therefore likely flare up. Now, if you're not in a relationship and you're manifesting, make sure you're not manifesting the same type. Or if you have done a lot of shadow work and then you invite in a new person into your life, which is awesome, whatever has not been triggered will be triggered by the new person because that is just how life works. We meet the same people, kind of people, all over and over again until we learn our lessons and that's what i'm getting here so the good thing is because you have venus as the as the, the strongest energy here this is not about you sitting back and doing shadow work this is you this is about you just being aware right maybe there's still stuff that sits there that needs to go look at it allow yourself if it's really heavy to cry it out, allow yourself to release it. Maybe you need to re-manifest, you know, write down what it is you really, you really want. Um, but from the point of view, as though you already have it. The moment you manifest from a point of lacking, from the point of luck, you're not really in receiver mode, right? So point is, this is all about sort of a heads up kind of thing um, and not necessarily a, a bad thing because the number of Venus here is 21, 2 and 1 is 3, 3 is the number of progression. So what the guides are asking you is to be proactive about how to deal with stuff from the past um, that no longer serves you when it comes to relationships, whether or not you're in one or you're manifesting one. Okay, so... Moving on now to opportunities as they present themselves to you in the month of October 2023 for your very sign. Before we continue, let me just tell you that I am currently a, uh, an executive contributor for uh, an amazing online magazine called Brains. And I do write a lot of articles, um, empowerment articles, I would say, um, for their mindfulness section and it's a free magazine all i need you to do is have a look at it so you find the link to the brands magazine in the description box below and i would really appreciate if you actually have a look at um 
my uh, articles and then obviously you will find a lot of great other other great people there and the reason why i know this is because without ego the brains magazine is very special in that they did a lot of research and they pick the executive contributors handpick the people that they feel fit their magazine and have a lot of uh, knowledge um, to help others so this is all about helping others and um, so I'm really, really grateful uh, that they actually contacted me. Uh, but now my plan is to obviously tell everybody about it to make this all work. Anyway, enough of the Brains Magazine for now. When it comes to opportunities in the month of October 2023 for your very sign of Sagittarius, it's not as difficult as you might feel it is. So what I'm getting is is reluctancy what the guides are saying is don't be reluctant uh, when it comes to looking for new opportunities new ways of doing stuff right but that means that you have to step out of your comfort zone so by all means step out of your comfort zone so what i'm getting is when the, what that means here and what i'm getting is for you is to not necessarily just follow what you have always done if you feel like okay well this is a, a, a shitty company and i'm going to move to the next one and they pay me better first ask yourself can i expect that place to be different is it really just the people or, or is it the the energy of what i'm doing for a living if that makes sense that um needs to be looked at right because obviously you spend a lot of time in 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 whatever it is that sustains you uh, these days and so therefore what's the point of going somewhere where you're not happy and not appreciated but here's the thing you have the outgoing or the last card i'm using the monology deck and the outgoing energy is the full moon in libra which means balance and the 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 the, the, um, the phrase a win-win outcome is forecast so once you realize that it is time for you to be a bit more reflective and it's like okay Am I am I really happy with what I'm doing, or am I just and am I just manifesting the same stuff? Once you do all that work and you are outside of your comfort zone, because you will like likely find that there's some truth to this. And all the guys are saying is, you know, maybe maybe you want to do something else, right? Maybe it's time to look at something else, or at least looking at making changes that make anything that you do that sustains you easier but you have a win-win outcome already provided that you get out of your comfort zone and don't just blindly repeat what you have done for maybe quite some time and and think just because i'm moving to another uh, company um it'll all be better because very likely based on the energy that we're getting here for you it will not sagittarius thank you so much um please like subscribe and share and if my reading resonates with you you want to possibly uh, support me. And how you can support me is by just subscribing. This really helps the channel out. Um, and then following me <clears throat> on Instagram and TikTok and all that kind of stuff. And if you really want, you could buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. That's www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. Sagittarius, thank you so much for being here. I'll see you all next time.